Okay, so how is everyone today? So, next week is just a normal week. And the week after that, what? Spring break, terrific. And then the week after that, what? Midterm. So the week after spring break is the midterm. Okay, and by the time that occurs, we will have taken quizzes at least up to seven, maybe eight. We'll see. So then, um, every quiz has three exercises. Two of those exercises are graded which means that by the time of the midterm there'll be 14 graded quiz exercises or so, maybe 16. So the way the midterm will be, uh, be done is that you'll go to a room and uh, you'll have 14 redo versions of all those exercises. So in the grade book you can see the grade that you got for each individual question. So perhaps in your case you did not, not very well on say quiz four, question two. Well, you can improve your performance on the midterm. There'll be a version of quiz four, question two, and you'll be allowed to select mm, probably like six or so for redo. So you can select six, and then you can improve your grade in that way. So if, for example, you say missed quiz four because, you know, who knows what, maybe they're having a taco special somewhere. Okay, then you can improve that on the midterm. There will also be some mandatory questions which is to say something like you'll have to do these three or four questions and then you begin your redo -ness. And we'll talk more about that when we get closer to the midterm. But any questions for now about that? Okay. So that's uh, the midterm is on, if I recall correctly, the 23rd. And it's in the evening. What's 23rd? Is that a Monday or a, is it Thursday? It's a Thursday, I think it's Thursday. So that means that we'll have an exam on a Thursday night, like at 7 or something. And I'll tell you the room later. Okay, but it's, it's some big room on campus. Okay, good. Okay, so last time we were talking about uh, equations and then we ended with the discussion about inequalities and today we're going to continue the discussion about inequalities so uh, equations have certain truth preserving operations that you can perform upon them so for example with equations you can add a number to both sides the, the, the same number to both sides and the truth will be preserved which is to say if it, if it was true at the beginning it will be true afterward and if it was false at the beginning it will be false afterward uh, also, you can multiply both sides of an equation by a number, so long as this number, what? Is not zero for, for an equation, for an equation. So you can multiply both sides of an equation by seven, that's fine. You can multiply both sides of an equation by negative seven, that's fine. Inequalities are, are share many, much of this with equations. Given an inequality, you can add the same thing to both sides. That preserves the truth. You can also multiply both sides of an inequality by a number, a non-zero number. However, now the behavior becomes different. Because if you multiply both sides of an inequality by a positive number, the truth is preserved. And if you multiply both sides by a negative number, the truth is preserved so long as what? you flip the direction of the inequality. Okay, so that's a little different. Notice that equations don't have a direction. Okay, but inequalities do. So that being the case now, we can solve some inequalities. So how about, uh, say, um, 3x minus 4 less or equal um, to 17. So if I asked you to solve this, what would you do? Add 4. So is adding 4 truth preserving? It is. You can always add or subtract the same thing from both sides. So the new left hand side is 3x. <laughs> and the new right hand side is 21. Now what? 
divide by 3 so is dividing by 3 truth preserving yes and so that's the answer so we perform two truth preserving operations from the beginning to the end and because they're truth preserving what that means is that this inequality has exactly the solution of that inequality has exactly the solution of that inequality. They're all identical in their truth. So the answer to this question, if you wanted to write it in interval notation, is negative infinity to 7. So how about mm, 7 minus 2x is less or equal to um, say 15. Now what? Subtract 7. So is subtracting 7 from both sides truth preserving? It is. So negative 2x less or equal to 8. Now what? Divide by negative 2. Okay, now the new left hand side, negative 2x divide by negative 2, well that's x, that was the whole point of doing that. And then what is 8 divided by negative 2? Negative 4. And now what notable thing has occurred in doing this? Right. It, the, the inequality switches its, its direction. So do you observe? This one, the direction was preserved, always pointing in the same direction. Whereas this one, it's preserved here, but here it's reversed. And if you wanted to do this in interval notation, it'd be negative 4 to infinity. <coughs> Any question about this? OK. So maybe one more. So how about 3x minus 1 divided by 7? Oh, not, not absolute value. Just 3x minus 1 divided by 7. Uh, say greater than mm, negative 2. So now what? Multiply both sides by 7. Okay, so I have to switch the direction of the inequality, right? Because that's negative. Because that one's negative. But I thought when something's negative, you switch the direction. If it went to a positive. Right. So the, o the only thing that matters is what this is, right? This, is po this 7 is positive. It's just, it's not relevant that this, that this negative 2 is negative. Okay, so then the left-hand side is 3x minus 1, and then greater than um, negative 14. Now what? Add 1. And then divide by 3. x greater than negative 13 over 3. Any 
good question about this. <clears throat> okay. Good. Next page. So, first remark is that so suppose suppose we look at uh, this so if x is greater than or equal to a and that looks like this so if we draw this a picture and it happens to look like this x greater or equal to a and here's a Greater or equal to a, then it would look like that. And if we have another one, x is less or equal to b, and if b is to the right of a, it would look like this. So then, the statement x greater or equal to a x greater or equal to a and x less or equal to b means both of these at the same time. So how can we draw that? So on the one hand, this is saying I want, I want my points to be red, and I want my points to be green. Well, right, which is to say intersection. So A to B. Well, this can be written succinctly succinctly as a less or equal to x less or equal to b. So all I want you to observe is that this thing that I wrote right here is just a slightly more compact way to write this. And it's, and it's convenient and we're going to use it. So this, this is called an inequality string. So now, if I were to take uh, this green and modify the B so that it's actually way over here, and I, I grab it and then move it over here, then there wouldn't be any points that are red and green. It would be like saying, I want all the numbers that are more than 2 and less than 0. How many numbers are more than 2 and less than 0? There aren't any. No numbers that are simultaneously more than 2 and less than 0. <laughs> everyone, who, everyone who's more than 15 years old and less than 7 years old, <laughs> step forward, right? Okay, there's no one that, that, that is this way. Okay. Good. So, that being the case, it, it is legitimate to write things like this. Mm, say, 3 less or equal to mm, 2x minus 1 less than 17. And I can say, okay, I want you to solve for x. <coughs> okay, well, what would you do? What would you do if it was just that? You'd add 1. What would you do if it was just that? 
add one. So we're going to do it just like that, except it's, it, instead of having two positions left and right, now we have three positions. So we're going to have to add one to all positions. So add one, add one, add one. So that'd be four less or equal two x less than 18. Now what? Divide by 2, all positions. So that'd be 2 less or equal x less than 9. And if we wanted to write this in interval notation, how do you write it? This is the left bit, the left part oh, of the interval, right. and that's Two. the right one. Right. Two to nine. Everything between two and nine. Yes to no nine. Okay. <clears throat> how about, how about, um, five less or equal to, um, let's write that clearly, less or equal to 3 minus 4x less than 20. Okay, now watch. Subtract 3. less or equal negative 4x less than 17. Now what? Right, divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. And now, what notable thing is going to occur? We're going to flip the inequality. So now, supposing that you know I got in a rush or whatever and I didn't notice, then this is how it would appear. It would say, OK, negative 0 0.5 less or equal to x less than negative 4.25. If I, if, if I didn't flip the direction of the inequality. Now I'd like for you to consider what this is trying to say. Among other things, when you have an inequality string, you should be able to delete the intermediate bits and it still be true, which is to say, how about that? Is negative half less than negative four and a quarter? No, of course not, right? Okay, so even if you forget, you know, just have a look and make sure that what you did makes sense. <laughs> Does it even make sense? This doesn't, couldn't possibly, this can't be made sense of. Okay, so. All of the inequalities change direction as a result. But they still maintain that this one is, is still or equal. Right? It still has its or equal part, but it's just pointing the other direction. And this one, okay, also is pointing the other direction. And it doesn't it doesn't have its or equal bit. Any question about this? <coughs> okay. And if we wanted to write this in interval notation, it would be negative four and a quarter to negative half. Okay, 
So last time, uh, not last time, but previously, we've talked about solving absolute value equations. Now we're going to solve absolute value inequalities. And in order to make sense of them, in order to make sense of them, we're going to need the picture. So would someone please remind us, what is the characteristic shape of absolute value when it's plotted? Not parabola. That's a quadratic. Oh, right. Quadratics have that. A V. A V. So here's the characteristic shape of absolute value. And then now I'm going to draw a horizontal line. y is a. So for example, be because, because of where I drew y is a, you can tell me the SIGN of a. What is the SIGN of a? Must be positive, because it's a horizontal line that's above the origin. So it's got to be a positive a value. So when we were considering absolute value equations, it was this, something like this. Absolute value of x is equal to a. So for example, to give you a specific example, absolute value of x is equal to 3. And I asked multiple times, <laughs> what could I possibly be covering up that would satisfy that equation? Negative 3 or positive 3, right? And that's equivalent to asking in this picture, in this picture, where does red touch green? So does red touch green anywhere? Yeah, right there and right there. So y equal absolute x touches <coughs> y equal to a. So if this in this specific case, you're telling me that 3 or negative 3 would suffice. Then what is it for this one? A or negative A, which is to say that there's one possibility, A, and there's the other possibility, negative A. So we've talked about this numerous times. So from this picture now, I'm going to make two copies of this picture, o almost copies. I'm going to put one here and one here. Okay, so this one there and one there. Okay. So now instead of the instead of the equation we're going to consider the inequality now. How about 
absolute value of x less than a. And to give you a specific example to look at, how about absolute value of x less than 3? So now I'm going to ask, what could I put into that this inequality right here? What could I possibly be covering up so that it could be true? Well, what could I be putting in there? Can someone give us an example? How about negative 2? Negative 2 would work. What else would work? Negative 1. How about 2.5? How about uh, 7? Wouldn't work. Seven's too much. How about okay? How about negative seven? Ah, still too much. Too much. Too much on the other side, right? So. So now let's. What I want you to understand what this is saying. If this picture was saying, if this one right here is saying, please tell me everywhere that red touches green. What is this one saying? Right. So now this is now this is red below green. Red below green. Okay. So to be clear now, to be clear, we're looking for the the x values that do this. So for example, here's an x value right here. And notice that for that specific x value, red is above green. So that's not what we're looking for. Here, at that specific x value, red is touching green. We're not looking for that either. That's the kind of thing we're looking for, that x value right there. That's one of them. Because for that x value, notice that red is below green. So do you observe that everywhere in here, red is below green? But if we go too far to the right, it's not. And if we go too far to the left, it's not. So again, these are important. This is A, and this is negative A, and then what is the answer? It's everything in between, right? So the answer to this question is everything between the A's. And I drew these A's as open. Why did I draw them as open? Very good. So now let me ask the question alternatively. How could I modify the inequality so that the picture would require filled in A's? Yeah, say less or equal, right? Then, then the A's would need to be filled in. <coughs> so we'll call this case the between, between the A's case. So to give an example of, of the between the A's case, <coughs> something like, how about absolute value of 2x minus 1 is less than um, 9. So let's think about this for a moment. I cover this up. And I ask, well, what could I, what could I put in there to make it work? Well, I can't put something bigger than 9. I could put an 8. I could put an 8.9. That'd work. And also, 
observe that I couldn't put a negative 100 in there either. Negative 100 wouldn't work because we're going to flip it to the positive version, and then that, that's not going to work. So what, what's required is whatever I'm covering up will make this inequality true so long as it's between the nines, between negative 9 and positive 9. So this is the between the nines case. So 9 less than 2x minus 1 less than 9. So now from here, we've done these before. So before I do the short sequence of steps necessary to do this, is there any question why this, ex why this is where you must begin on this exercise? Is there any question about why you must begin here? Okay, so then add one. Divide by two. The answer is negative four to five. So what this is saying is that you, that's the interval that you get. So uh, 4.99 is fine, negative 3.99 is fine, negative 4.1, that would be, that's just too far. It's not going to work. Okay, how about this one? We say, okay, absolute value of x greater than a. And to give your eyes a specific example to look at, absolute value of x greater than 3. So, what x's would make this work? Four. Four would work. Four million would work. But how about going the other direction? What would work? Negative four. And negative four billion would work. All of that stuff would work. But notice that two is not going to cut it. Two won't make this work, and nor will negative two. So you've got to be big enough, essentially. You've either got to be big enough positive, or you've got to be big enough negative to make this work. So That's where this stuff begins. And so now let I'll do this sentence. So this the corresponding sentence is where y equal absolute x is above the green. So having a look at the picture, where is the red above the green? So by analogy, by analogy to this statement, what's the corresponding statement that we should write over here? So if we said this is between the A's, what's this one? Outside the A's, yeah? <clears throat> so it'll look like this. So these three problems, where red and green are touching, that's at the A's, touching at the A's. Where red is below green, between the A's. Where red is above green, outside the A's. So for example, absolute value of 3x minus 2 is greater than 
um, seven. So what this is saying, if we ignore the symbols for a minute and just look at the structure, it's saying that you need to, I need to, in order for this to be true, I need to reveal something that's big enough, either big enough positive or big enough negative. Either one, right? So big positive values would work, like eight. <laughs> big negative values would work, like negative eight. But small positive values like three aren't going to work. Small negative values like negative two aren't going to work. So it must be the case that 3x minus 2 is small enough or 3x minus 2 is big enough, more than 7. Now, one notable thing that you may not like is, isn't it nice on this problem where you can, where you can write it as an inequality stream? Isn't that nice? And notice I didn't do that here. It's because it's not possible. I promise you if it were possible, that would be what I would show you. Because I, I promise you I'm just as lazy, if not more lazy than you. I promise you that. And, you know, if nothing else, you're going to have to do a whole bunch of written assignments and people are going to have to grade it. And it'd be far easier if you were writing less because then there's less to look at. <laughs> okay, so I'm telling you that you can't write this as an inequality string. And I claim from these pictures, you should be able to tell me why you can't write this one as an inequality string. Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The solution here is the union of two intervals that have no common commonness, no commonality. One interval, another interval. A contiguous piece, another contiguous piece. Here, this one is a, con is a single contiguous piece, a single interval. The fact that this one is expressible as a single interval is why you can write this, as an this one as an inequality string. And the fact that this is two contiguous intervals that are, have no intersection means that this has to be written as two separate ones. It's just the facts of life. So these need to be written down separately and solved separately. Okay, so then this is what? 3x less than negative 5 or 3x less uh, greater than 9x less than negative 5 thirds or x more than 3. So, it, e it even reads like the picture, right? You have to be small enough or big enough. Any question about this kind of example? So there's two other possibilities besides, besides uh, these two. So if you recall, the first time we talked about equations, I said, well, look, if I grab this and I wiggle it around, then you'd see you'd see these intersections, these two intersections wiggling, and these these two little things would be wiggling too. So wiggle, 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 great. And then if I if I grab it and pull it down to the horizontal axis, then these then these two solutions will merge to a single one, because then they'd be zero and negative zero, which is the same. And then if I grab the green and pull it down even further, then you won't have any of these; they'll just be gone because there'll be no intersections. So now we need to explore what that means for inequalities.
Now, because I've where I, because of where I've drawn this this y is a, you should be able to tell me it's sign. Negative, because I drew a horizontal line that's below the origin, so it must be negative. So the question here is, how about the absolute value of x equal to a? And to give your eyes something specific to look at, maybe something like absolute value of x is equal to negative 3. Well, what x's will do that for you? None. There's no solution to this, which is to say, in the picture, where do red and green touch? They don't. Okay, so this has, so red, touch, green, no solution. Now let's look at what this means for inequalities. Okay, so for this one, we'll consider how about absolute value x less than a, and to give your eyes a specific example to look at, absolute value of x less than negative 3. Well, how about it? What x's would, would do this for us? None. There's no x's that'll do this for us, algebraically. Where the picture is concerned, this is asking, where is the red bit below the green bit? Where? <laughs> Never. So, solution. Absolute value of x greater than a. So to give your eyes something to look at, absolute value of x greater than negative 3. So how about it? What x's will do this for us? So would one do it for us? All, All of them, right? He's asking, what, what x's could you put into the absolute value so that something greater than negative 3 would come out? Any x, right? Any x will do that. The positive ones will do that. Zero will do that. Negative ones will do that. They'll all do it. So this is saying, when is the red bit above the green bit. Which is to say, have a look at this picture. When is, for what x values, the graphite bits, is the red above the green? So is red above green there? Yes, right, for all of them. Similarly, where is red below green? No, none of them, right? So, 
The answer here is all reals. Okay, so there's four different cases, and you need to be quite clear about which one you're looking at. So the four cases are these. Okay, there's between the A's, outside the A's, never, and always. Okay, and I'm not going to, I'm, I'm just going to shotgun a whole bunch of questions towards you, and you're just going to, you're going to have to look at it and be able to say, oh, it's this one or that one. Okay. So, for example, <clears throat> absolute value of 2x minus 7, divide all that by 4, and then that mm, less than uh, 8. Why not? Uh, this one, the absolute value of 2x plus 5 divided by 3 greater than or equal to um, 6. The absolute value of 3x cubed minus uh, 5x squared plus 7x minus 9 is greater than or equal to negative 4. And the absolute value of 4x minus 7 divided by 5 is less than negative 2. Okay. Let's think about this for a moment. Which one is which? So for example, let, let's, let's, let's look at the one that looks the most difficult for a moment. The one that looks just crazy. Okay, how about this one? It's got a cubic in there. That's outrageous. And a degree three polynomial. What's the answer to this one? All x. <laughs> All x will do this. There's no even no work even required. Why? Do, why is the answer to this all x? Right. So let's consider. What am I? I'm covering up something there. It's an absolute value. What? What could I? What could I put in there? So that in, what can I put into that absolute value so that whatever comes out is greater or equal to negative four? Anything. Any x will suffice. So the answer here is just all reals. Or if you had to write this in interval notation, how do you write it in interval notation? negative infinity to infinity, right? Okay, how about this one? What's this one? Between the eights, right? Because if you cover it up and think about it for a moment, this is like the Goldilocks question, right? Which is to say, well, I can take things that are that are up to up to eight, like seven point nine would be all right, and all the way down to, to almost negative eight, like negative seven point five would be fine. But I can't go beyond the eights. Right? I've got to be in between. So this is this is between the eights. Which is to say that negative 8 is less than 2x minus 7 over 4 is less than 8. So now, 
From here, it's just turn the crank stuff. It's just algebra. Is there any question why this one must begin here? Is there any question why we must begin here? Between the eights. Okay, after that, it's just, okay, negative 32 less than 2x minus 7 less than 32 negative 25 less than 2x less than um, 39 negative what 12 and a half less than x less than 19 and a half okay how about this one Really, it's not everything between plus and minus 2? Why not? It looks just like that one. This was everything between plus and minus 8. Why is this not everything b between plus and minus the 2s? Because <laughs> right. they look, they look kind of similar, right? But they're, they're completely distinct exercises because the question is, structurally, just what could you put into the absolute value? so that something less than negative 2 would come out. Nothing. Right? So this has no solution. And then finally, what's this one? This is outside the sixes, right? You've got, you've got to be big enough, either, either big enough positive or big enough negative, which is to say that we need 2x plus 5 over 3 less or equal to negative 6 or 2x plus 5 divided by 3 greater or equal to positive 6 so before I before I finish is there any question why you simply must start here because once you get to here it's just algebra just turn the crank stuff the question is can you get to this start starting position you have to be small enough or big enough. Okay, so I'll do this part quick. So less or equal to negative 18. 2x less or equal to what? Negative 23. x less or equal to negative, uh, come on brain, 11 and a half. This one, 2x plus 5 greater or equal to 18. 2x greater or equal to 13, x greater or equal to 6.5. Small enough or big enough. Okay, well that's it for today. Have a nice weekend.